Hi, welcome. My name is Zarana G. I'm a Photoshop product manager at Adobe Systems. Thanks again for joining me today um, for yet another tutorial at PSD Toots. Um, today what I want to show you is another component of Photoshop CS5 Extended and its 3D capabilities. But what I'm going to do is um, show you how you can import 3D objects, bring them into Photoshop, and composite them to a photograph or background image and adjust and fix for the perspective, positioning, as well as uh, lighting, and match it to that of the background. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we are in Photoshop CS5 Extended, and let's talk quickly about uh, the workspace setup that I have here. I have a few panels open. I have the 3D panel, as well as the layers and adjustment panels, and the mini bridge panel here, but we're not going to use that in this tutorial. Um, to open up your panels, you just simply go to your window menu and select on 3D adjustments and layers. Okay, now um, in this start file, the start.psd file, uh, there's a couple layers. Uh, the first layer is the Park Sempione background image. Uh, this is a two photo panorama that I took in Italy and stitched together in Photoshop and did some simple color corrections. We're going to clean up this image a little bit more as we go uh, along further into tutorial, but for now we can leave it at, as is. And the top layer here is hidden right now, and this is the 3D object that I'm going to show you how you can import. Now, importing 3D objects is pretty simple. There's uh, several really good sites out there that have um, from free to paid content that you can get. If you go to your 3D menu down at the bottom to the Browse 3D Content Online, you'll notice that you get brought to this Photoshop 3D page. And if you scroll down here to the middle, you'll notice that there are a few partners that we work with that offer really great 3D objects um, that mostly have been vetted in Photoshop and um, you can open them seamlessly. So 3D Via actually is interesting. They created a great plugin that allows you to browse models directly inside Photoshop. So if I install the plugin, I can then go to File, Scripts, uh, sorry, File, Import, Search 3D Via, and you'll notice that I get brought into the Search and Import 3D Models dialog from 3D Via, and I can simply type in the model that I'm looking for. In this case, I'll just type in car, give it a couple seconds there, and you can see that all the different car models here that I can open, and by clicking on any of these, they'll actually open directly inside Photoshop, which is really nice. There you go. Now, here I actually have the object uh, right inside of this file. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now you'll notice that when I brought in this file, it's mostly transparent. Now just a quick note here, um, between CS4 and CS5, actually Collada Exporter, this file is a Collada file, it's a .dae file, um, changed the way they handle transparency between 1.4 and 1.5. Um, so depending on what version of the application you're using to create this 3D object, you might bring in models that actually have this issue. Now, I'm going to show you how you can uh, correct for this. If I go here and type invert opacities Photoshop, you'll be taken to this knowledge base document that um, where we've created a script that allows you to invert every uh, transparency or opacity map inside this 3D object. You'll get what I mean um, if I come back here to this object. Now let's go ahead and select this 3D object and I'm going to run that script that I just showed you. So I'm going to say scripts, browse. I'm going to look for that script and the script should be included in the package of assets that you're downloading for this tutorial. 3D invert opacity. I'm going to go ahead and run that script. And what it's going to do is run through each material contained in this 3D object and invert the opacities. Now, just a little bit about file formats. Um, we support DAE, which is this file, it's a Collada file, as well as KMZ, the Google Earth format, as well as 3DS, OBJ, and uh, U3D. Um, you can import and export, so you can round trip all those formats aside from 3DS. Okay. The first thing that I want to do here is uh, reposition the 3D object so that it's um, in alignment with that of the background image. Now to do so, I'm going to go ahead and click the N key on my keyboard. It's going to select the camera rotation tools. 
and in my 3D scene panel at the very bottom, I'm going to click 3D ground plane. This is going to turn on the overlay of the ground plane. You can see that the ground plane is actually not aligning with that of the image right now, and I need to reposition it so that the vanishing points of both the 3D object match up with that of the, the background. Um, now, to reposition this, uh, there's several ways I can do it. You can see right here that I'm using this 3D axis to uh, reposition um, the different, on the different axes. If you don't see this 3D axis, you can actually come over here back to the 3D scene panel at the bottom and turn on 3D axes. This will turn that axis on and off. A quick note here, this axis is actually context sensitive. So depending on which 3D tool I have selected, whether it's the camera tool, the object tool, the light tool, or the mesh tools, um, this axis will act upon that property that I have selected. Okay? So right now I have a camera tool selected in here in the toolbar as well as over here in the 3D scene panel, and therefore this axis acts upon the camera. I can also select uh, individually select any of the camera rotation tools nested in the toolbar or on the options bar to um, help with alignment. Now, a quick note here. You notice that whenever I'm clicking on the actual object here, that background image disappears. Now that's really distracting and also it's not really effective for this part of the workflow because I'm trying to match the ground plane to that of the image. Now what's happening is that by default Photoshop sets um, auto hide layers on for performance. Okay, What that means is that whenever I interact with my 3D object any other layer will di disappear temporarily. I can turn that um, off here by going to the 3D menu and unchecking auto hide layers for performance. Okay. So what I'm trying to do here is line up this green line, or this is the um, y-axis, and match it to um, the rough vanishing point line that I've identified here along the side of the building. It takes a while to get used to using these navigational tools, but um, after a few times you get the hang of it. So trying to get this car so that it's resting on this um, ground of the image. Now I may want to come back here and make some minor adjustments, but for now I'm going to go ahead and save this camera position. And the way I can do that is with a camera tool selected here in the toolbar, um, up here in the options bar you'll notice this little disk icon. If I click that I can go ahead and save this image, save it as my ground view, and I can come back to this camera position at any time. Now the next thing I want to do is rotate this car, the object itself, so that it's in the front view and more or less uh, matches the scale of this car in this image. So I'm going to go ahead and click K for my keyboard shortcuts and it's going to select the object rotation tool here. And I can um, again use my widget here to uh, rotate the car or I can use any of the tools that are nested in the toolbar there. Let's go ahead and ro rotate that onto its side. And I'm going to pull this back on the x-axis a bit. Slide that back. Okay. Now it's a little bit big, so I'm going to go ahead and scale it. I'm going to place my cursor over the center of this axis and just click and drag down. Or alternatively, I can choose this last icon here in the options bar, the scale object uh, tool. Another really handy feature that we have in CS5 Extended is the ability to snap the object to the ground plane. So as I'm rotating this object around, it may have actually lifted off the ground plane a little bit. 
and if I choose 3D snap object to ground plane, it'll slap, snap the lowest point of my object to the ground plane. Okay, so it's back in line. So then I'm going to actually just slide.